Everybody, it's the uh, 13th of March, middle of March already, and uh, just buds just beginning to burst on this Japanese maple, um, which I promised myself I was going to repot this year and repot it. I'm going to. Uh, it's a lovely tree. Somehow I ended up putting it too far across. Um, although I think, as I said in the last video, the tree has pushed growth this side far more consistently than the other side which has led yeah, in part to this imbalance so um, yeah let's give you a quick 360 as is it's going to need some pruning up top um, as well as some root pruning we do have a strange bit of dye back in a scar here but that's healing over so hopefully in a, a few years it will be barely noticeable this is the second in the group um, also will need repotting uh, again I'll give you a quick 360 of that yeah, it's a taller more slender more elegant tree than the other one which is kind of squat and stubby I guess you could call it um, but both of these were bought from supermarkets they're both orange dream they were both bought from uh, Tesco's I believe it was there I said it Tesco's for um, three pounds several years ago a uh, bit of a bargain really and always worth looking out for I guess they're probably a bit more expensive now several years on um, but even so uh, compared to what you might pay at a garden centre three pounds is a bit of a bargain to practice on if uh, you fancy growing a Japanese maple which can be tricky this is yet another three pound maple this time it's emerald lace and i've got it propped up on this bit of old brick just because that's i want to change its planting angle to this um it's kind of laid down on the job somehow um so yeah i want to bring it that bit more upright i haven't got a bonsai pot that i want to put it in um, even though i had quite a number for christmas what I want to do with this one is put it into a, a bigger seed tray let it grow on some more clear out some of this jumble at the top um, and get a bit more thickness and girth because it's a little bit slender um, but yeah I had bought four uh, if you go back and look at the playlist um, the beginnings of this playlist in the early videos there was another tree which was a tailor which was a pink and green variegated Japanese maple and for some reason that croaked on me which is a bit sad um, but happens sometimes I guess so that one's not in this video anymore um, but you want to see it those videos are still there okay so the last one in the original sequence from the five was this uh, maple that I've grown from seed and this had a most spectacular uh, red autumn foliage it's just, just a plain Asa palmatum otherwise um, but yeah it is a very glorious tree again I'm going to pot it up into a larger seed tray to fuel some more growth and get some more girth into it so no pretty pot for this one yet maybe next year who knows Father Christmas might bring me some pots next year I featured these two little maples last uh, in the last video, last November, um, because it had glorious autumn colour. Um, and I haven't repotted them, I'm not repotting them this year, but I have given them a trim back so, so you can see that they've been cut back to a framework, um, hopefully to produce some more back budding closer into the trunk. Um, I probably won't feature these in this video, uh, this group of videos, this playlist going forward in fact I'm probably going to start splitting out the individual maples into their own playlist as they develop more but I just thought I'd give you a quick look at those so you can see how they are kind of trimmed up so 
So let's start with this orange dream. Um, it's a good opportunity to get rid of a lot of this moss that I hate. Um, come on tree, out you come. It's been in there quite a while. Doesn't want to come out. There we go. That's good. Uh, it's come out fairly cleanly. A good root base. Uh, some weed growth. So I'm going to start by uh, cleaning the top and getting rid of some of this moss. Just going to use this nylon brush. It looks a bit vicious, but it's actually very gentle. It doesn't damage the bark or the roots too much. Because it's only got nylon bristles, it's a bit like a toothbrush. Um, yeah, big toothbrush, big teeth. But it's not damaging. It's not like a wire brush or something. That's better. Now what I need to do is to remove a fair portion of trunk, which might mean I'm going to have to do something with this root. Um, unfortunately, if I'm going to get it moved across in the pot, but I'm going to start by going straight across to there, like so. And I'm going to take off all this stuff that's wrapped around. And round and round. I'm going to try and leave that root. Um, if I can, and tuck it under. So that's a nice surface root. Okay, now then, let's see how that fits into the pot. Yeah, still a little too central, I feel. Um, yeah, too central. Okay, so I'm going to have to try and scrape away some more soil so that I can maybe move this root. I don't want to lose it if I can help it. Let's take some of that stuff off the bottom. Maybe get the tree a little deeper and bend that root down. Like so. Um, Still gives me that reasonably nice looking nabari. I can get that root to stay in place. And I can cut away a little bit more root here. Okay. Yeah. That'll work if I can get it to sit nice. What is that, a dog? Yeah, that'll work much better. Okay, so let's get some fresh soil, substrate, compost, call it what you will, in there. So it doesn't need too much. Um, I want to raise it too high in the pot. So that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. And just get that to sit in tight. Yeah, a little bit more. But before I put in a little bit more, let's put in a little bit of control release fertilizer. Like 
that in. I want a little bit more this side, just to bring that up a little. And if I can tuck that root in and around and place that tree, yeah, that's good. That's fitting quite nicely, like so. No flat bottom to this tray, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that'll work. I just need to get enough soil in this side to keep it pushed up against the other side. And then the roots growing will firm everything up in the pot anyway and do the rest of the job. awkward little gap to get the soil particles into here but keep pushing shoving working gradually filling in making sure there's no air pocket and uh, eventually we will get there I won't bore you with it all so there we have it all filled in nice and firm and uh, ready for a drink Tree number two, a um, bit more straightforward this one, I just want to take off a bit round the edge, just a, a sort of, going to be just a basic short back and sides. weather can't make up its mind the sun's come out and the rain started uh, at the same time but there you go so that one's done we'll take that one away and give him a drink slightly simpler process with this one although um, I'm going to have to remove some soil to get it in at the angle I want. Uh, I'm not really going to be doing much with the roots. Um, start with the clearing off of the top again. A bit of weed in this one. Because I want the tree at this angle, I'm going to have to take off more soil from the front here than at the back, and uh, that will allow it to sort of become a kind of wedge shaped that will sit in the pot at that angle better. I'm just combing out the roots. Um, and I'm only going to remove what I need to remove. That makes sense. Probably doesn't. But uh, there we go. Right. Let's shifty that. Bring in this. Yeah, that'll sit in there at a much better angle. Right, I'm not really going to need to remove any roots at all. So let's just fill it in. That's better, that's a more upright angle. It's got an interesting kink. Um, I think this will probably be my front. Um, but that may change as the years go by. Uh, being in this bigger seed tray hopefully will give it some oomph to develop even better, bigger and better. I'd like to get some more growth out of this point. There's a shoot here um, and maybe I can grow that as a sacrifice branch to kind of fatten up the trunk a little bit. Worried about the seed tray it's in. Um, they work well 
but you need to get decent quality seed trays. Some of them are so flimsy, if you fill them with this substrate with all the grit and that in it, it's quite heavy, they'll just literally fold in half on you. Whereas this is good, solid, good solid tray, worth the extra expense, especially if you're going to move your trees from time to time like I do. Okay, it's going to be the same process for this uh, one from seed. So this one is uh, a little bit more root land. So I might need to, in fact, I think I will. I think I might take off all the roundy roundy stuff. is to go around the edge with my shears and I can take off some of that big stuff as well so that's good because that'll encourage fibrous rooting back in closer to the trunk which is always desirable trees like it too because it means they don't have to work so hard to draw it back up into themselves. That was a shorter distance for them to travel. I know it's not exactly the same but it's uh, could be thought of as the difference between using a really long straw and a, a really short straw. Which one is easier to get a drink from etc. Okay so I won't waste your time watching you. I'm just going to pop this into this extra large seed tray. Oh, not extra large, but just a large seed tray and fill it in. Okay, so um, I'm going to remove some of the top growth now. And uh, I've got some old bits like this piece here that's growing just straight up. So I'm just going to try and take that right back to that branch. Get my fingers to work, that's better. Um, and I've got a number of pieces all coming off the same point there. So, and they would eventually grow back across the trunk. So I'm gonna get rid of those and that. And there's a dead stub just in there. I can get into it. It's better and then I'm going to shorten that and that piece is coming straight at us so I'm going to get rid of that piece going straight down crossing pieces that I'm going to remove and uh, That'll hopefully compensate for the amount of root that I removed. I don't like this double apex here. Um, so I'm going to take off this big chunk. I've been looking at it and thinking about it um, over the winter. So it's not a you know, sudden decision. I think that looks better. I didn't like that, and as I say, it was like a double, double feature going on. And this side I didn't grow very well last year. So we'll see what it does this year. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Pinumin and iron, I'm going to take that off. Shorten that, dead stub. that dead stub. Crossing piece. I think that'll be enough. No, we won't. Take off that. That's better. So there we go. Quick 360. We'll see how the tree develops this year. So tree number two. Um, 
uh, as I said earlier this is a much more slender tree and uh, I kind of like it like that again I kind of got a double apex going on so um, I don't know it's, I'm slightly happy with it but no I think I'm going to remove it I can get those in that's slightly better and I'm going to remove this thick old branch here just to try and slender up the apex a little more um, I did take off a fair bit of root so I'm going to take off all these crossing branches that are really not adding much anyway I'm going to reduce that in fact I'm going to take that right back like so and uh, take off that tip I think the tree will thank us for it in the long run okay and simplify the apex a little further there we go back to the front quick 360 miss that dead stub and that branch going into that right, I'm going to shorten that off altogether that's better um, yeah back to the beginning hmm, happy with that so I've looked at this for a hot minute or two and uh, I've come to the conclusion that yes this is indeed my front um, the view from the other side the graft there is a little ugly and uh, I just prefer it kind of stooping towards me what I want to do with this now is shorten back a lot of these long growths As always, I've left a bit of a stub because maples do tend to die back. And if you cut too close to a set of buds, um, they will die back past those buds, which obviously you don't want. There we go. So, quick 360 on that one. And as always, as I go around, I see something I don't like. I don't like this. I've got four branches all coming up sort of more or less the same way in fact there's a fifth one if you count that one I'm gonna take out that to there take out that entirely and shorten that one we'll see how that goes so lots of long leggy growth on this one this is my front this is Again, this, this is the um, tree grown from seed uh, way back in 2018, I believe. I'd have to look back in the playlist. Um, if you check the playlist, you'll see when it was sowed, I'm sure. Um, very big long piece here. I'm going to shorten right back. I'm going to get rid of that piece that's crossing below it. Uh, get rid of these couple of pieces that are growing out towards the viewer um, and that branch growing that way not in this way okay so they're there that I'm gonna take that off Two branches coming from the same spot. I'm going to remove that one. 
shorten that. And then I have this long sacrificial branch here, which I'm going to leave in place. Um, at least for the beginning of the season. And we'll see how that goes. So again, a quick 360. And this will make an interesting tree for one day. Okay, so that about wraps it up. Um, I think uh, this will probably be the last in this playlist of the um, the four trees, the five trees um, originally, and I'll probably start separating them out into orange tree one, orange tree two, uh, red maple, red autumn maple, and uh, emerald lace maple for future videos. But subscribe to find out whether that happens this year or next year. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. It is very much appreciated do the youtube things the liking the subscribing etc etc but most of all and most importantly of all please 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 look after yourselves stay safe everybody